Hey, it's Megan with Historical Home Rehab. And in the last video, I showed y'all how we got our old subfloor up and exposed the floor joists that were underneath that subfloor. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking at those floor joists and make any needed repairs to them. And then hopefully we can get our new subfloor down. Looking at this exterior wall, it looks like really what I need to do is do two two by sixes resting on this plate. And the reason for that being my subfloor is gonna go across the top and when it gets to here, as of right now, there's nothing for it to rest on. And so if I add my two by sixes here, then what'll happen is my subfloor will go across the joist and it'll rest on top of this, which will give it support. And then I'll be able to screw it into this board, which will hold it in place. general idea of what needs to be done but now I'm just going to kind of systematically go from one to the next one and just kind of fix what needs to be fixed in the order that I get to it. One of the things I'm making sure of as I go is that these joists are an appropriate distance from each other. In new construction you want your joists to be 16 inches on center but in this case I just don't want them more than 16 inches. It looks like this joist was cut previously for whatever reason, and they poorly repaired it. I'm gonna take this opportunity to fix it correctly. So I got all the mess out that basically it was like framing for where uh, the old furnace used to be, like AC unit slash furnace, I don't know. Um, anyway, so I got all that out and, um, and so now basically what I need to do is this is the location of my new shower and so I can't leave it like this because these joists are way too far apart. So I think what I'm gonna do is if I put one from this side of this little stub, this side, and you just wanna go from beam to beam with your joists so that they have something to rest on. Yesterday I did a lot of work on the floor joists and pretty much got those all where they need to be. Um, today I'm going to do a couple of cross braces around my toilet and um, adjust the plumbing on the uh, shower drain. It needs to be a little bit longer just so I can clear a floor joist and get actually right underneath where my drain is going to be. And then I should be good to go on putting my flooring down. I always like to dry fit my subfloor first just so I can make any needed adjustments before I start trying to attach it. In between your first layer of subfloor and your floor joist, it's always a good idea to use some kind of floor adhesive. It really just cuts down on the chance of having squeaky floors in the future.
When you're screwing down your plywood subfloor, you're gonna wanna put a screw about every eight inches. So that means about 48 screws per piece of plywood. At this point, we have our first layer of subfloor down. And so um, what we're gonna do is, it's a little bit of overkill, but it sounds like a good idea, um, is we're gonna put basically some felt paper on top of this first layer and then put another layer of subfloor on top of that. And basically the felt is just kind of like a little bit of a waterproof layer. Um, so if there's any kind of moisture in there, um, it won't rot the wood. Since I'm working with a pure and beam foundation and I'm wanting to use tile on the floor in my bathroom, I decided to go ahead and do two layers of three quarter inch plywood in my subfloor. So, 77. 77, exactly, yeah. Good, that's really, really good. <laughs> 